Hello and good evening and welcome to this night prayer on Sunday the 24th of May. Uh, you're very welcome to join with me in the service. Uh, I will give you directions uh, through the uh, wording of the service. But as we uh, continue our journey through from Ascension Day to Pentecost and we dedicate ourselves afresh to prayer as we await the celebration of the coming of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday. Let's recommit to deepen our relationship with Jesus Christ. Let's pray for God's Spirit to work in the lives of the people that we know. And let's come to realise that every aspect of our lives is the stuff of prayer. So we pray, come Holy Spirit, to inspire and equip us to share the good news of Jesus Christ, specifically in this time between Ascension and Pentecost, we're asked to pray specifically for five people who have not yet responded with a yes to God's call. So we're going to pray for those people. You have them on your hearts and minds. And let's just come before God now, knowing that he is here and He's with each and every one of us. As we remember the words of Jesus and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, he was lifted up and a cloud took him from their sight. Then they returned to Jerusalem and were constantly devoting themselves to prayer. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. You may wish to light a candle for this service please do so you may want to have a cross in front of you you may uh, if you have a bible uh, we are going to be doing two readings tonight the uh, two readings set for evening prayer and there's a psalm and it's also a letter to the ephesians so let's come again and remember that the eternal god is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The theme of this day four of Thy Kingdom Come is the theme of saying sorry and God's forgiveness. There is a very powerful video testimony uh, which you could look at after this service if you'd like. The link will be on the church website. It comes from the resources for Thy Kingdom Come. But for now, please let's just take a few moments of quiet to think back over the day that has passed. What are the things you thought, said and done for which we need God's forgiveness? Let's pray. And let us accept that in Jesus, God forgives all who truly turn to him. And 
return to him in penitence. This is God's amazing grace. And so we pray, save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. And so, released by God's forgiveness, let us continue to worship him, and we listen to his word. The two readings set for tonight are Psalm 47, and Ephesians chapter 1, Psalm 47, and Ephesians chapter 1. And I just ask that you let these words flow over you and rest in your spirit. Psalm 47. For the director of music of the sons of Korah, a psalm. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. For the Lord Most High is awesome, the great King over all the earth. He subdued nations under us, peoples, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob whom he loved. God ascended amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid the sounding of trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing to him a psalm of praise. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. The nobles of the nations assemble as the people of the God of Abraham. For the kings of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the New Testament reading is Ephesians chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 15. Ephesians chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 15. Thanksgiving and prayer. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all his people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that can be invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be the head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the newsletter for this week, the words of that passage from Ephesians really impacted me. All those sentiments that, God, that Paul expresses here are true for you and me. God speaks through Paul's words. Even in these 
current circumstances, perhaps even more so because of the circumstances. Each one of us on the pastoral list of St. Thomas's is being prayed for constantly. Everyone in our community is having prayer spoken over them. Every man, woman and child that belongs to St. Thomas's parish. They're being held before God, asking for his blessing on them. Please, I just ask that you know tonight that however you're feeling, thanks are being given to God for you, for who you are. You are precious in the body of believers. You are a gift because God made you. We are made in, in his image. As Paul says in this letter, and so this is also said about you, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his people and his incomparably great power for those who believe. It takes great power to love and to forgive others as God forgives us. It is God's power at work in us and that is the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead Jesus who is seated at the right hand of the Father in the heavenly realms far above all rule and authority power and dominion and as this passage says God placed all things under his feet Jesus is the head of the church his body. We are the fullness of Jesus. That's what this passage says. It's what God speaking through Paul says. We, the church, are the fullness of Jesus who fills everything in every way. Nothing better. Nothing more. There can be nothing more than Jesus. He is above all and in all. Just imagine the change that acceptance of that truth, the acceptance of Jesus as their saviour, what would that do in the lives of the five people that you are praying for? Imagine them transformed by God's love. Imagine them transformed because they meet Jesus. This is a quote from the Christian writer Kierkegaard. God creates out of nothing. Wonderful, you say. Yes, to be sure. But he does what is still more wonderful. He makes saints out of sinners. There's another video link given on the church website for tonight. Again from Thy Kingdom Come. It's a video narrated by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby. And I do recommend that you watch that with the truth in mind that God makes saints out of sinners. So as we turn to prayer, I keep on encouraging you to keep a prayer journal so that you can note down anything that God gives you in prayer. It may be a word, it may be a picture a revelation maybe that he wants to say something specific to you in prayer please do have a prayer journal throughout all of this time and beyond 
just going to start with a response, Ray, if I may. The response <clears throat> is, make us ready for your coming spirit. You may like to say that with us. Make us ready for your coming spirit. As we wait in silence, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we listen to your word, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we worship you in majesty, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your refreshing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your renewing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your equipping, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we look for your empowering, Make us ready for your coming spirit. And now I ask you to hold before God the five friends that you're praying for, praying that they may be led by the Holy Spirit to understand the cost of God's love for them in Christ, that this great sacrifice would lead them to repentance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We hold before God in prayer also our church family calling to mind the faces of those we know, the people with whom we have sat in this building, with whom we've had fellowship. Lord, we thank you for the family of St. Thomas's. And we also give thanks, Lord, for all those people who are working in the emergency services, in hospitals, in care homes, the police, the armed forces, the service industries. Lord Jesus, we pray for all those who are providing for us at this time. And we pray, Lord, and bring before you all charities, large and small, their volunteers, their staff, who are working night and day to provide essential services for those who would otherwise be struggling. Lord, give them your strength and protect them, we pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need as if we were caring for you. So we hold before you the community of St. Thomas's Parish, praying for every man, woman and child that they will either receive the good news of Jesus Christ at this time or go deeper in faith. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for all clergy and lay ministers in your church, working to give comfort and provide pastoral care. Please, Lord, give them all that they need at this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our bishops and all those working within our diocese. We pray fervently that you will bring about a renewal of faith in Jesus Christ and that we may, we may see people turn to him as their saviour. 
In his blessed name we pray. Amen. And Lord, I want to bring before you our vicar David and Josh and Alison. Lord, pray your blessing upon uh, the vicarage, Lord, and all the work that is going on on the phone, through the internet, providing services. I thank you, Lord, for David, for all those who are bringing uh, your services, Lord, and your worship online, that people may join in. We pray for Barbara, Lord, as she undertakes her studies as well as doing the services. Lord, give her all that she needs at this time. Merciful God, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe. And Lord Jesus, we do bring before you again tonight Sheila, as she has had to return to hospital because of concerns for her health. Be very close to her tonight, Lord. And Lord Jesus, we pray and bring before you also Louise, Debbie, Stephen, Nick and Joanne, Bob and Sue, Norman and Jean. God of all healing, bring your comfort, your strength and your peace, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, our Father, by whose mercy the world turns safely into darkness and returns again to light, we place in your hands our unfinished tasks, our unsolved problems and our unfulfilled hopes. To your love and protection we commit each other and all those we love, knowing that you alone are our sure defender through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for thy kingdom come. Almighty God, your ascended Son was sent, has sent us into the world to preach the good news of your kingdom. Inspire us with your spirit and fill our hearts with the fire of your love, that all who hear your word may be drawn to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and being made one in the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray in the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So, Lord, we pray, visit all our homes this night, and drive far from them the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us in peace, and may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In peace, we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. And as we come to the close of our service, let us bless each other in the words of Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 to 27. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord, the Lord turn his face towards us and give us peace. Amen. Please do go to the church website for the video links. The song on there as well is the Father's song. I have heard so many songs. Listen to a thousand tongues, but there is one that sounds above them all. The Father's Song. 
and it is sung over you tonight. I wish you a peaceful night.